All right, hi, it's Mr. Hayes. We're gonna talk absolute values here. So this is the learning card for solving absolute value equations. Um, we're gonna chat through some general stuff. I'll give you three examples. Um, you can find all of the links down here, down below, or you will shortly. Um, I've got all the algebra ones down there. We're gonna to try to get the algebra two up. Um, so right, for general patterns, remember your goal on these is to get your absolute value by itself. So you want your absolute value equal to a number. Now when I say equal to, it's going to hold true for inequalities as well. But you want to isolate that by itself. Because what's going to end up happening, remember we're talking about distance from zero, right? And that's going to always be greater than or equal to zero. All right? A couple of things. For helpful hints, um, remember we're going to take the inside of my absolute value and set it equal to the outside, and then we're going to also, because of that, that inside could also equal the opposite of whatever that outside would be. And that doesn't matter if it's a, an expression or a number, it's always going to be the opposite of that entire side. Now, a couple of other things, remember, if I have an absolute value, if it's equal to a number that is um, bigger than zero, here, this will work. If the absolute value is greater than zero, I'm going to get two answers. If my absolute value is equal to zero, I'm going to get one answer. And then if my absolute value is less than zero, I'm going to get no answers. Now, the one answer, two answer, three answer, thing, or the one answer, two answer thing does come with a little bit of a caveat. If you're talking about quadratics on the inside, that obviously will change things. But the important thing is that when you get your answers, to make sure you double check them, particularly if we have expressions on board. I'm going to guess most of you so, are watching on your phones. So again, remember the first process is we want to isolate the absolute value. So I'm going to add four to both sides. So the absolute value of 3x minus 2, and again, I would make these big enough so you don't get them confused with 1s, is equal to 10. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have 3x minus 2 is equal to 10, or that inside could also equal a negative 10. Now you have to set it up like this. The big mistake people make is that they forget that the absolute value on the inside can equal negatives, and they just solve one, and they just say, it's just going to be plus or minus that answer. And the answer is it's not. It's going to be whatever that expression on the inside is going to be plus or minus. So from here, we'll solve So there's one possible answer. You're going to do the same thing over here. Now, you're going to want to check your answers because occasionally what's going to end up happening is this. Don't worry about copying this part down. We know an absolute value looks like that. We also know that we have a line. So like in this case here, we've got a horizontal line, so it's probably going to hit it twice. You might also get a line that, also, you know, that hits it twice like that. You also might get a line that only hits it once. But given the setup that I'm doing here, where you're getting two answers, you're going to get a phantom answer out of this. So you always need to double check your work. Okay? So for the check, all you're going to do is just plug it back in. So 3 times 4 minus 2 minus 4 equals 6. True. So we have 10 minus 4 equals 6. We're there. This is the thing we first. 3 times 8 equals 2 minus 2 minus 4 is equals 6. When you add them, you get 8 minus 2. So I get, you get 10, which is not going to be 8. Okay, and again, there are going to be spots where that doesn't work, so you want to make sure that you don't fall for it. Now, for double absolute uh, values, the same thing holds true. Okay, you, um, the inside has to be equal to the outside. Now, again, don't worry about writing this down, but in terms of understanding what's going on, if I've got the absolute value of A is equal to the absolute value of B, you've got a couple of options. Your A is going to equal B, the opposite of A is going to equal what B equals, the opposite of A is going to equal the opposite of what B equals, and the, and the A is going to equal the opposite of B. Okay? Now, when you do these, you've got two equivalents. These two are equivalent here, and these two are equivalent here. So we don't have to do four equations, we just have to do two. Which is why that original setup, in terms of inside equaling outside, etc., is going to hold true. Our two options here, we don't have to solve for anything, which is nice. So either x plus 5 is going to equal 2x minus 1. So that's they're the same sign. 
or x plus 5 is going to equal the opposite of 2x minus 1. So, and again, the reason why I'm making sure I put parentheses around here is so the thing to remember here is that this needs, you got to take the opposite of the entire side. So, we'll come back to that here in a second. So when I do this, I'm going to get x is equal to 6. So that's one of my options there. On this side, rewrite this. Um, x plus 5 is going to equal the opposite of x plus 1. So I'll get 3x is equal to, what is it, negative 4. And x is going to equal negative 4 thirds. Um, so then we're going to check them out over here. So for the first one, 6 plus 5, does that equal to 2 times 6 minus 1? Yeah, I'm going to get 11 equals 11. That's it. Now for the other one, I'm going to get a negative 4 thirds plus 5. Is that equal to 2 times a negative 4 thirds minus 1? Here I'm going to get 5 minus 1, 4 minus 3, 3, 3 and 2 thirds. So that's not bad. This side over here, I'm going to get 8 thirds minus, I'm going to turn that into 3 thirds. So that's going to be a negative 11 thirds, which would be 1, 2, 3, 2 thirds. Okay, so in this case, this one does also work, so we're good there. Uh, so that one works. Now, occasionally you'll get one where it looks like if I had subtracted or added, things will fall apart. But let's go ahead. So now this last one is what do we do in inequalities? So this one here, it depends upon how things are set up. If it's less than, think about what's going on. So I've got a number line here. I've got zero, and I want the answer is less than nine. So that means that's going to be somewhere between nine and negative 9 because that's the distance between 0. So I'm going to stay inside of it. So this is really, I can think of this as negative 9. It's going to be larger than this bottom number. So this inside has to be bigger than negative 9, but it has to be smaller than 9. And so you get this compound inequality, so you can just do everything at once. If we are in, if we are on the outside of this, so if we're on the outside, then I have to write in this separate. Anyway, so when I do this, the nice part is, is that you can do it all at one shot. So then I'm going to end up with negative 4 is less than 8x, which is less than 14. Divide each part through by 8. So this is going to be negative 1 half is less than x, which is going to be less than 1 and 3 fourths. Okay? And then we can graph it. We can do everything there. We are going to because we are this type of people. Write it in interval notation. Okay. Um, now again, if it was eight x minus five is greater than nine, then at that point I would be on the outsides of here, right? I would be in this area. In this area. Those don't overlap, so I can't put them in together in one. So I would say, okay, x, the opposite of x minus 5 has to be less than negative 9, or x minus 5 has to be greater than 9, and I would solve those out. So hopefully that gives you something to work on, have some basis, have some notes for it. So um, we'll continue to have this pop up in class from time to time. So with that, hopefully that will get you on your way, and we will see you in a bit.